In this video, I'm going to do an unboxing of a Netgear WNHDE 111 5 GHz wireless and access point bridge that I got from eBay. That's a mouthful. So let's get to it. Now, just in case you're not familiar with my channel, I have a DVR that I rolled myself. So basically I have a Windows 7 PC that I use Windows Media Center on as my DVR. I use a cable card and I have Media Center extenders throughout the house. So I don't really need any cable box in my house. I just have pretty much my own equipment. Now, I have an old house and I don't have Ethernet jacks anywhere. I rely on wireless in my house. And for some reason, using these extenders in the house is uh, not really that great over Wi-Fi. So the built-in Wi-Fi on my Xbox 360 and my two separate extenders made by Linksys, uh, the Wi-Fi on those devices is just not up to snuff. When you try and watch something through those extenders, there's a lot of stutter. It's just pretty much unwatchable. So the only solution I've come across is to use a wireless bridge, attach it to the extender, and make the extender think that it's attached via Ethernet, and then things work with no issue at all. Now I have a brand new Netgear extender that I've tried. It cost me $50 off of Amazon. and it doesn't work. It works pretty much just like the onboard Wi-Fi on those devices. And I think I've narrowed it down to the fact that I have a dual band wireless router in my house. One of course is the 2.4 gigahertz and the other band is the 2.5 gigahertz. And generally the bridge will default to the 2.4 and then if that's clogged up it'll go to the 5 gigahertz. And that causes problems in the communication between my extenders and my PC. So my solution is, is to use only a five gigahertz wireless bridge. And the one that I came across that works very well is the Netgear WNHDE 111. I have one in the house already and I bought two more. Now this one is, I believe, the one I bought for $24.99 shipped. Now, to my knowledge, they don't make these anymore. And if you can find them, they're generally fairly expensive. You can get them for like $100. But if you do some shopping around, you can get a bargain. And I scoured eBay, and again, I found the two. The other one that I bought was about $32 shipped. So, all in all, I spent about $55 getting these extenders working but it's worth it in the end because you save money from your cable company. So now that that's explained, you can see this beat up box here. Actually not beat up box, but it's been used several times, which is good because I'm a proponent of recycling things and I probably will be reusing this box as well. So let's grab my trusty cutter here and let's get this thing open. There's a lot of tape on here. So let's hope that this dull cutter can get through it all. We have an ethernet cord, which I don't need. I have quite a few of those, but it's good to have. This comes with a stand. The original one that I purchased, the one that I have in the house already, does not have a stand. You have your OEM wall plug. Here's the device itself. It's kind of large, but um, I don't care. It does the trick. And you can either lay it down like this or stand it up. Of course, that's why you have the stand here. It fits right into the bottom. But let's go over this. I've done an unboxing on this before, the original one that I purchased, so I'll make it very quick. You have a glossy finish here. You have your Netgear branding. You have venting up top. You have venting on the bottom. On the front, you have your Netgear branding, and it looks like the protective plastic is still on the front here. I'll probably leave it on there. If you pull it off, it'll be glossy. Here you have a power indicator light, and you do have some other lights back here that will tell you, uh, you know, if there's communication going on. You have your WPS button here. Now that comes in handy because I was not able to set up my original device through software. 
and I have a WPS button on my router, so all you have to do is press the button here, press the button on the router, the two devices will communicate automatically, and there you go, you have your bridge set up. Now the cool thing about this is that you can use it as a bridge for two devices. So you can actually connect, if you have two devices that you want to use this bridge with, you can connect them with the two Ethernet ports back here. Of course you have your power port back here, you have your reset button here, and you have a switch here where you can actually switch it between bridge mode, access point mode, or auto. So auto will be both access point. If you're not familiar, access point will basically extend your wireless signal. So if you have a large house and your router isn't powerful enough to transmit that wireless signal throughout your house, you can use this device to pick up that signal and then transmit it further. Sort of like a relay point or something like that. But I will be using it in bridge mode only, so that way it does not broadcast at all. It's just going to offer internet to the two connected devices here. And then, of course, you have your on-off switch there. So very cool. Let's put this in the stand here. And that's how it looks in the stand. Makes it stable. Again, the, the one that I already have doesn't have the stand. So that is going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, share this video, or favorite this video. Now, if you click on the link at the end of this video, you can see my setup in my house as my cat steals the cord there. Uh, you can see my setup in my house, how I use these extenders. And at the end of everything, I'll show you my entire setup. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.